In this video, we'll be taking this vase and this absolutely colossal two and a half year old moss terror and turn them into what's possibly the world's first air moss filter. My name's Greg and you're very welcome to the joy of aquascaping where we look at all things fish related. I've worked with fish for over 20 years now, both as a hobbyist and as a professional. And I wanna share all of the things that I've learned with you to help make your fish keeping experience even better. Stay tuned for tank builds, species specific information, and all things fish keeping related. Thanks for watching the joy of aquascaping. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. A lot of fish keepers complain about how moss can just clog filters up completely. I've seen it myself. Moss ends up kind of breaking up, growing on all the surfaces, and eventually just coats and can block filters. It can be a real nuisance. But I tend to use, in a lot of my smaller aquariums, just air sponge filters. And I thought, well, if it's going to get covered in moss anyway, why not just make it from moss in the first place? Now, I've scoured the internet and I can't see any references to people turning giant, colossal clumps of moss into an air sponge filter. And I thought, you know what? In this case, let's just give it a go because I've had this vase for the last mm, 10 years, perhaps, and I've successfully raised things like x-ray tetras and I've got them to breed in here and I've had a couple of little small fish, nano fish in here over the years. They've done absolutely fantastic once everything was set up the right way. And I think with this giant moss ball, I think we can create something unique, something that looks good, but something that ultimately serves as a fantastic filtration system for this aquarium. Now, the main goal with this is basically to recreate an air sponge filter. We're going to have water getting sucked in through the sides of this super dense moss ball and that's going to draw in any particulates that are in the water and it's going to get caught in here and that's going to be a place for little animals to feed on it and to graze on it for biofilm to get set up to create an entire biological and me mechanical filtration system. Now for the base of the aquarium I've gone in with some clay balls. Now these particular clay balls are something that I have in abundance and I do have a live plant wall in my office mini pond. I'll link a video to that here. Basically, I've got tons of these already covered in good bacteria ready to go. So this will be a fully cycled aquarium from the get-go. And the other thing is, this particular moss ball has been grown submerged for the last year and a half at least because it was left out in the backyard. Everything else in it pretty much died back and it's just the moss there. And unfortunately, a couple of grass seeds got in, but they'll probably just die back over time then as well. But it has been ground submerged. It's covered in things like good bacteria and little critters that do like to live underwater. So it is its own ecosystem entirely now at the moment. And I think being able to get that in here and into the water pretty quickly is going to serve to kind of make a full ecosystem very, very quickly because it's basically been aging and developing its own ecosystem in the backyard anyway for the last year and a half. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just setting up a little bit of a an aquascape here as such. The idea is I've put some more of these clay balls in on top. They'll serve as a nice ground for biofilm to get all over, cover the surfaces of it. And also, if we have fish that are scattering eggs and breeding in here, perhaps a little place for a little fry to hide and maybe little shrimplets, as well as in the actual moss itself, because... All of this moss that's going to be in here, it's going to be a super place for a little tiny shrimp and little tiny fish to live and hide out. And also, it's already full of infusoria. It's full of little critters that little fish are going to be able to eat. Again, an entire little mini ecosystem, which is exactly what we want. Now, a lot of the balls that I'm putting in that aren't ones coming from my live moss well, these are new ones. They haven't been boiled yet, and they're just going to float if I don't boil them. They are full of air and that needs to be boiled out. Basically, the process of boiling them, it expands the oxygen and the air inside them, and it just fizzes out as little bubbles. It took about 45 minutes for it to actually be done, and you just test it by taking it off the stove, and if there's any floating, it needs more time, and if they're all sunk, well, then in that case, you're good to go. Now, because of the fact that this was sitting on a big lump of mud at the bottom of that terrarium for so long. Some of it had got a little bit broken up during the process of pulling out some of the grass roots and I did need to rinse it off quite thoroughly. It took quite a bit of time to get it to the point where it was mostly clear and the rest of it I'm not too worried about because I think just the fact that this is going to be a living filter where all those particulates are going to get sucked into it kind of clear up in no time. And you can see here after about 45 minutes all those clay balls apart from one we're completely sunk down to the bottom. That's exactly what we were looking for. 
Now at this point, we have pretty much all the components of our aquarium ready to go. And this is gonna be a very low cost to set up and to run aquarium. This thermometer is only about the size of a finger. It's only about five watts. And it's just to prevent a bit of a chill from kicking into the aquarium from the window it's beside. And this is a tiny five watt USB light as well, just to help with a little bit of extra photosynthesis on top of the moss, because even though it's beside a window, there doesn't be an awful lot of direct sunlight hit here. And I think that it would benefit from it. Plus just for the aesthetic, it's always nice to have a little light on top of your aquarium as well. And at this point I came in and I filled it about two thirds of the way with water from my indoor mini pond. And I topped it off with fresh, clean rainwater. And then I added some good bacteria just to help build out the good bacteria that are in this system, coat all of the glass and all of the bio balls that were put in fresh, and kickstart things, get this bacteria colony really gone. So this is a super filtration system. Now the filtration system isn't gonna work if we don't install our airline, but that was a quick, simple one. And it's another USB powered one. So this entire system is being run off one single plug socket. And with that, we have what is potentially the world's first air moss filtration system. Now the key with any biological filtration system is to have good flow moving around. And one thing I noticed very quickly was that even with just this tiny USB powered air pump, the flow and the movement throughout the entire system was actually really good and it was working out exactly as I had hoped. You can see here all the tiny particulates in the water, all kind of mud and stuff, just moving into the moss column. And once it did, it got caught and trapped there. And as the air bubbles rise up, bringing water with it, it was absolutely crystal clear. And it did clear up in no time. And you can see, it might not look at the very bottom that there's much going on, but if we speed things up 10 times, you can see there's a huge amount of movement going on. And with that, in absolutely no time, the aquarium was absolutely crystal clear and something that I have to say, I was really happy with the way it turned out. And the thing about a biological filtration system is it needs something to eat because essentially it is a living ecosystem that does require food and that food is the waste being produced by the animals that live in it. And these are three white cloud mountain minnows that I've put in here, two males and one female and the waste that they produce is going to be enough to feed this system and keep things going but they're only going to be in here for a little while, long enough for these guys to breed. I've been fattening them up in their little indoor mini pond, and these guys are going to be feasting and snacking on all of the little tiny creatures in here. We've got the male down the bottom there with his beautiful colored fins, and the female with her big boxy belly. She's full of eggs, ready to go. And I have a feeling we're going to have breeding in here in absolutely no time. But that's it, guys. Moss filtration system is working out absolutely fantastic. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.